Godzilla Minus One made a surprise debut on Netflix on June 1st, quickly becoming a hit with subscribers. Within a day, the film shot up to number 4 on Netflix's top 10 list of movies in the United States, reflecting on its strong performance in theatres. Given the unexpected release and the film's recent addition to the platform, Godzilla Minus One is likely to climb even higher in the coming days. This surprise drop is just the latest success for the film, which has already broken several records during its theatrical run. Currently, Godzilla Minus One is only sitting behind Atlas, Colors of Evil Red, and The Lego Movie. In order, the rest of the top 10 titles include Detective Pikachu, Shrek, The Super Mario Brothers Movie, Madam Web, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, and Mother of the Bride. Godzilla Minus One debuted in theaters with remarkable success, setting a new record for the strongest US opening weekend for a live action Japanese movie. It also achieved the highest grossing Japanese language film status and became the highest grossing Japanese Godzilla film ever released. These accomplishments are just a few of the many accolades the film has garnered. Godzilla Minus One has received incredible critical acclaim. The film holds a 98% score on Rotten Tomatoes, the highest of any Godzilla movie. With the audience score matching at 98%, acclaimed filmmakers like Christopher Nolan and Steven Spielberg have praised its quality. Notably, the film won the Oscar for Best Visual Effects, becoming the first Godzilla movie to be nominated for an Academy Award and the first Japanese film to earn a nomination in that category. Directed, written and overseen for visual effects by Takashi Yamazaki, Godzilla Minus One features a talented cast list. The story is set in Japan during the country's recovery after World War II where Godzilla wreaks havoc. Godzilla Minus One is now streaming on Netflix. Drop your thoughts into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts on Godzilla Minus One's massive success in the theatres and now on Netflix. And also hit that like and subscribe for more videos and I will see you in the next one. Exciting news for Lord of the Rings fans. A new movie is in the works and there's a good chance that Viggo Mortensen will return as Aragorn. Mortensen, who played the fan favourite character in the original trilogy, has fond memories of working on Peter Jackson's films and is open to revisiting Middle Earth. In a recent interview with CBR's Kevin Powery, Mortensen discussed his potential return in The Hunt for Gollum. He expressed his willingness to reprise the role as long as the story, quote, made sense and he seems confident that it would. Mortensen highlighted how much he learned from his time on the original trilogy, fueling his enthusiasm to play Aragorn again. A key factor for him would be filming in New Zealand. During the interview, he went on to say the following, quote, If it was the right way it was being done, or if it made sense, sure, Mortensen said of returning as Aragorn. Why not? I learned a lot. I had a great time. It was like a massive, lengthy, complicated, adventurous film school for me and everybody else who was involved. I mean, you got to see people solve all kinds of problems and new approaches to filmmaking. Peter Jackson and his team, it was amazing what they accomplished. So yeah, sure, it'd be great to revisit that, especially if it was in New Zealand. It's a country that's beautiful. I really like being there. The Hunt for Gollum will be directed by Andy Serkis, who is also expected to reprise his role as Gollum. Peter Jackson will produce the film alongside screenwriters Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens. The movie is slated for release in 2026, with the script currently in development. Hey there guys, Ryan here. I just wanted to do a quick shameless plug to let you all know I do in fact have a Twitter page here, ReviewFlix. Make sure you come over and join our page so you can stay up to date with all the latest pop culture news that's going on with Marvel, DC, Star Wars, etc. And also we'll be updating all the content that we have from our YouTube channel onto our Twitter page as well so you can stay informed with everything going on in the world of pop culture. That would really help me out guys and would really go a long way to supporting my content and my YouTube channel. Thank you so much, let's get back to the video. For now, fans can watch Viggo Mortensen in his latest film, The Dead Don't Hurt, written and directed by Mortensen himself. The movie features him in the lead role, alongside Vicky Creeps, Garrett Dillahunt, Solly McCloyd and Danny Houston. Set in the 1860s, this period film follows two lovers separated by the American Civil War. As for Lord of the Rings, The Hunt for Gollum, while it doesn't yet have a release date, Fans can look forward to Mortensen's potential return as Aragorn. Meanwhile, The Dead Don't Hurt is now in theatres. 
Would you be excited to see Viggo Mortensen return as Aragorn in a new Lord of the Rings movie? Be sure to pop your thoughts into the comment section below, hit that like and subscribe for more videos, and I will see you in the next one. Sony Pictures has unveiled the first trailer for Venom The Last Dance, offering much more than a typical teaser. Packed with action, the trailer sets the stage for what is being marketed as the final instalment in the franchise. In the trailer, the symbiote finally convinces Eddie Brock to embrace his role as a lethal protector and engage in some vigilante justice. We see them violently dispatching a group of goons, signalling a darker turn for Eddie and Venom. However, Venom's actions attract unwanted attention. Chewie Tell Ejiofor from Doctor Strange and Juno Temple from Ted Lasso play characters tasked with tracking down Brock. Additionally, it appears members of the symbiote's alien race are now interested in Eddie and Venom. As the trailer reveals, Eddie and Venom will face a monstrous new symbiote, but the question remains, will that be the only villain they encounter? A brief glimpse of Stephen Graham's Pat Mulligan suggests that Toxin might also make an appearance. This might be Venom's last solo outing, but many fans feel it would be a missed opportunity if we never got to see him face off with Spider-Man. A piece of the symbiote did remain in the MCU when Brock was zapped back to his own universe in No Way Home's post credit scene. Sparking speculation that a confrontation might be imminent, however, it's not likely to happen in this movie. If Tom Holland had filmed any scenes for The Last Dance, we probably would have heard about it by now. Hey there guys, Ryan here. I just wanted to do a quick shameless plug to let you all know I do in fact have a Twitter page here, ReviewFlix. Make sure you come over and join our page so you can stay up to date with all the latest pop culture news that's going on with Marvel, DC, Star Wars, etc. And also we'll be updating all the content that we have from our YouTube channel onto our Twitter page as well so you can stay informed with everything going on in the world of pop culture. That would really help me out guys and would really go a long way to supporting my content and my YouTube channel. Thank you so much, let's get back to the video. Eddie and Venom are on the run, reads the synopsis. Hunted by both their worlds and with the net closing in, the duo are forced into a devastating decision that will bring the curtain down on Venom and Eddie's last day. What did you think of the trailer? Does it get you more excited for Venom The Last Dance? And what part stood out to you the most? Leave all your thoughts on what you liked and didn't like in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and be sure to hit that like and subscribe for more videos. Until next time, bye for now.